Good night, everybody. So, if you've been following my show up until now, um, on the last episode, I tried to feed a sequence of samples, of sound samples, into the sound card using a web API for synthesizing sound. And so I kind of reached a a roadblock where it's not as easy as just feeding some sequence of uh, numeric values into a, a, a function in an API on the web, um, on JavaScript. You actually have to transform your uh, samples, your sequence of samples into a Fourier transform sequence of uh, sin and cosine, sinusoidal and cosine functions, um, which is kind of a bit of an advan- advanced mathematics subject. But I just posted on Twitter a video by Numberphile, which you might uh, use to learn more about Fourier transform. Um, so anyway, I guess I'm not going to get into the details, uh, obviously, about what that transformation, that numerical operation is about or how it works. I'm just going to sort of show you what I mean with a like easy to understand diagram. Something that's not so complicated to understand. So basically what I want to do is I'm going to have, you know, this is an arrow representing time and these are uh, sound samples or le- levels of uh, voltage going into a speaker. And so what I'm going to have here is uh, several samples at different points in in time. So uh, here's I'm just going to take a couple of guesses here because I'm not actually sure how this Fourier transform is going to work. I've never used one before. But roughly what I ex- what I expect here is to have uh, a level that's going to be zero here. So this is like zero volts uh, in the in the speaker. A level that's going to be one or like 100, you know, the maximum voltage. And a level that's going to be minus one. I- I'm guessing this is what I have to use as the range for my samples because of the way the uh, functions I'm going to use uh, are written. But anyway, uh, so let's suppose I don't know. I guess let's 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 suppose that I have a sample here, which is just 0.5 approximately, and then I have another sample here, that's one. Then I have another one here that's 0.5 again. Then I have I don't know zero here, minus 0.5, minus one, minus 0.5, and zero. And so what I have here is, uh, and maybe zero here to begin with. So what I have here is a sequence of samples. I have uh, pretty much just one, two, three, four, five, uh, nine samples, right? And these samples, what I'm going to do with them is I'm going to store them in an array. So I'm going to have an array that's going to be just zero, comma, point five, comma. 1, comma, 0.5, comma, 0, comma, minus 0.5, etc. And the idea here is to fit this into a fast Fourier transform function, which I'm just going to represent here as a black box, rather a black box. And this is going to be the FFT function from the JavaScript library I cloned yesterday. And what I'm go- what I'm expecting to get uh, on the output here is instead of a sequence of numbers, I'm going to have two arrays of numbers. One of which is going to represent the values of uh, in the Fourier transform of the cosine components of the signal that I'm trying to transform, and so I, I guess it's going to be the real part and then the imaginary part that's going to be the sine or either the real one is sine and the imaginary is cosine or it's the other way around. I don't think it matters much because either way I'm going to have two arrays of numbers. Like I'm going to have a number here. 
etc. And I'm going to have another group of numbers here. And these uh, two arrays are what I'm going to feed into another function that's going to be, or rather I'm going to feed them into an attribute of a object, which is the, uh, what was it called? I have it somewhere around here. It's right here. The oscillator node dot set periodic wave, right? So this oscillator node object or class uh, is from uh, Mo Mozilla's um, sound API, which I think I must have saved somewhere. I think it's this one here. Right. So yeah, so I have, I guess it's this object here that I'm going to try to, it's, this is the, the documentation for a repository which I forked yesterday, precisely for doing what I'm going to do today. So it's here, and this is where I cloned, rather I created a, what's called in GitHub, a sub-module. So these two are sub-modules. So this is the Fourier transform. This this repository over here represents this black box here. This is where I'm going to enter these uh, values and where I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get the output here and th these uh, values, I'm going to enter them into this interface, which is this really supposed to be this really easy to use uh, tone generator. So somewhere in these files, I think it's somewhere in uh, maybe here or in demo, somewhere in here, there's this uh, oscillator function from, from this uh, question. It says oscillator node. So let's see here where it is. Oscillator node. Okay, there's no oscillator node there, but set periodic table, let's see if there's a set, no, there's no set periodic table, I guess, because these are not custom waves, all, the, the only waves this person uses here are like sine waves or cosine waves or just, you know, uh, regular st standard waves that you, that this library provides, um, but which I'm not going to, well, I'm going to use them maybe to benchmark my my project because I want to sort of uh, try to produce a triangular waveform like this, probably. And so I just want to check if the triangular waveform actually produces the desired out output, like the desired tone. Uh, so I'm going to compare my my waveforms that I'm going to feed into the Fourier transform black box, and then I'm going to feed into the uh, the Mozilla Audio API to this. It's called the periodic wave. Yeah, periodic wave object from oscillator node. Instructor audio the audio context. I'm sorry, audio context, audio context. Whoops! Oh my god! Audio context. Hmm. So I just forgot how to use. How do you use paint? There we go. So that's the basic idea of what I'm going to do today. Sounds fairly simple, but I guess there are a couple of intermediate steps that are not completely obvious, uh, like where the code is. I'm going to have to find my way through the code and sort of identify where each part is, and then I'm going to have to sort of generate mathematic uh, uh, waves, you know, functions, you know, here, and then 
So, but I, I'm, I guess that's what this episode is going to be all about. So, let's get started. Uh, so, yesterday, the, the file I was working on was here. Uh, it's this file over here. So, this, this turned out to be uh, a big disappointment because I tried to use a really old sound API that's no longer supported, apparently. Like, it's completely obsolete. So I had to do all, all the stuff, all the research I just showed you guys to sort of get started. I, I just copied the lines uh, project from my previous uh, episodes because what I want to do is to use this to generate the sounds. But I guess uh, before, you know, I guess I'll just code it in right in here, what I'm going to try to do. Uh, but anyway, okay, let's see here. Okay, so I guess the first step I'd like to uh, complete is I'm going to go with the tones here. I'm going to check out the readme file here. Okay, so it says the web audio API is pretty amazing. You can actually synthesize audio with JavaScript right in the browser. The only problem is that it's pretty low level and not exactly intuitive to work with. This library is meant to make it a, as simple as humanly possible to create pleasant sound, sounding musical tones. See a few demos of tones in action here. Okay, so I really want to check out like the source code, uh, the source code for that, because I saw uh, some parts that I thought would be useful for me. Okay, so let's see here, uh, view page source. Okay, so no, no source. Guess the it's the require demo require data main. Mm, where precisely is that? Let's see demo require. What's the demo require tones tones.js mm, demo js? I think this is the one. Uh, okay, yeah. Oh, there you go. Custom. So it has it already has a let's see like an interface for a custom. Maybe, it, oh, okay, so there's like no reference to, mm, okay, interactive. So I guess it just has this, so I may have to extend this to include custom. And I may have to bring in the FFT to sort of, you know, transform my waveforms into custom. So it says here, let me just see where I can triangle. Okay, so tones dot type equals triangle. Okay, tones score mm, play mm -hmm. math dot random. Yeah, so I guess this is sort of filling a buffer with uh, random tones, but that's not what I want. What I really want is mm, something that. Get time square. Uh, okay, tones dot type dot type. Right. So I guess what I really want to see is where these types go, so that you know I can change that. And I think it's not on the demo JS, but rather it's probably in the tones JS. Uh, let's see here. Type type sign. There you go. So I guess sign is sort of like the default here. And let's see, OSC, oscillator type, right, oscillator, oscillator. Oscillator is, var oscillator, create oscillator. Okay, so it uh, creates a oscillator. And frequency set value at time. Okay, so this sets the frequency, this sets, this sets the type, the envelope. Uh -huh. It just starts the oscillator and then it plays the oscillator, I guess. Function freq note octave. Okay, so let's try to oscillator node set periodic wave. Uh, okay, let's see. Mm, frequency. Detune type. I guess 
I guess the object here, this object here, the, this create oscillator, which creates an oscillator node. And I guess, okay, you you never set custom waveform. You never set type to custom manually. Instead, use the set periodic wave method to provide the data representing the waveform. Okay, doing so automatically sets the type to custom. Right. So I guess that means that if I alter the code from here. Okay, so let me just see if I can get this running in my own computer so that I can so change little pieces of the code here, like here maybe. And once I change the code here, I want to hear if, like, okay, here's the demo. So let me try to serve this in my own computer. Um, oh, nice. Very nice. Okay, so the idea is to change that tone from whatever it is to a custom tone. Tones.js demo. Okay, so let's see, demo.js. I guess I'm going to try to change the type here. Let's see, type, 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 type. Uh, types, 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 lighter value, uh, but like what, what is the file that's here? It's text, JavaScript, tones, and demo. Okay, so this is the demo. So I guess, let's see the piano. I think it's what it's called. Here you go, piano. Okay. Uh, tones type sawtooth. Okay, it's sawtooth, but what if I want a square instead? Tones the type square. So if I change it to square, yeah, I get square. Nice. Okay, but I don't just want to change it to square. I want to change it to custom, and I'm gonna make. I'm going to do like a small test here if to just to see. Set periodic wave. Okay. Also later note dot set periodic wave wave wave. Wave is actually uh, real and imaginary, like this pair here. So I'm just gonna change, like, I'm just gonna take these variables, and this is what I'm gonna use to, this is, these are gonna be the places where I'm going to enter the Fourier transform results that I'm gonna get in a while. So, oops, I'm not there, but here. So the Fourier transform is going to go somewhere. Okay, so it says not to set the, the the value custom here directly. Rather, I have to go to uh, tones.js and I have to check here like type, like where where does type go? Type equals this type. So, uh, yeah, yes, yes. So instead of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and like add another attribute here that's gonna be the periodic wave. I'm just gonna call it wave because that's what it's called here in the documentation. So I'm just gonna say wave. And this wave is gonna be a couple of uh, how could I turn this into like uh, a couple of arrays, maybe an array of two arrays, perhaps, real and imaginary. Um, I'm feeling a bit fancy today, so I want to see if I can, let's see, store couple of, uh, what's it, what's the uh, arguments in variable. Uh, JavaScript uh, variable number of arguments function possible to send a variable number I always pass in one argument to your JavaScript let's see one argument one argument ABC 
A, B, C, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, A plus B plus C, call me arguments, arguments, call me 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, A, B, C, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, params, dot one thing, another thing, right. So I'd probably have to pass like an object or something like that. So uh, I guess I'm going to create a uh, Fourier class, so a Fourier transform class or something like that. So I can function window. Okay, so it's just like a function or something. You know. um, uh, for simplicity's sake, okay, I'm, I'm not feeling so fancy today, maybe. So I'm just going to like add a couple of variables, you know, empty sort of just things here, just like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I'm just gonna do it like that. And so here, after the type, uh, you know, like rather I'm just gonna say no, no, and if the this dot um, wave uh, let's see it's not it's equal to no sorry for the mess I'm a little bit new to JavaScript you know so just bear with the ugliness of my code. Um, you know, I really don't mind, but this might be offensive to some people. So, if it is to you, I'm, I'm deeply, I'm deeply sorry. Um, okay, so if there's some value in wave, I guess I could ask that. Uh, yeah, let's see. The correct incantation is, of course, create periodic table. Oh no, it's actually AC. There's no oh, okay. So there's an I have to create an audio context with the values I'm gonna have. So oscillator dot. Uh, what was it? Far wave set dot set periodic wave wave. And I guess I I could just say wave. Like this, and then I create the like thing here or whatever, right? Something like that, and that should reset, you know, ask that type to whatever this is. Um, and so for the piano object, so let me see if that broke the piano. No, it's still working. So for the piano object, if I Okay, so in the in the documentation example, it says that this works because a sound that contains only a fundamental tone is by definition a sine wave. Okay, so this is the sound it makes now. And if I change it to this, it should be the same sound. So I'm, I'm going to just, you know, to keep control of the experiment, I'm just going to change this from sine to square. So that it sounds or rather sawtooth. Oh, I mean, oh, sorry, this isn't even the demo, the demo JS. Okay, square C. Okay, so that's square sign. Okay, so that's what it's supposed to sound, but right now it's square. Okay, so if I change the tones dot instead of type, if I change the tones dot wave to be equal to this thing here that I have here, this thing here, this, this thing here, this, this awkwardly inserted piece of code here to... 
with the uh, uh, with the var wave to this to this would I would I get wave would I get the result no that totally broke it it's totally completely destroyed okay right well, now we have a problem. Now we don't. Let's see. Uh, okay, I guess. I guess. Let's inspect this. Mm -hmm. Okay, failed to execute. Okay, let's just refresh this to see what. Oh. Okay, so it says wave is not defined. Object play frequency tone. Object play. Anonymous failed to execute stop. Okay, okay. So wave is not defined. What you know? What wave? Uncaught. Where? Tone. Dot. Js. Line. Thirty-five. Fifty-seven. And two hundred and ninety-two. Okay. Tones. Line. Thirty-five. Uh, tones. Line. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Wave. Oh, this dot. This dot wave, of course. This dot wave. All right. So let's see if that plays a sine wave. Oh, there it is. Awesome. Okay. So. Um. After that, what I, I guess I can sort of maybe try to add a couple of weird, you know, just random uh things here. Um. Maybe not. Uh, something like more complex with five components, which is five components here, and instead of just this, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, and uh, okay, so it's just gonna be one, zero, one, two, two. I'm gonna brute force this because I'm impatient to five, five. Oh no, that's not the right way to do it. Real? Oh no, it is. It is though, and I sort of I got carried away with the number of things and. And it's not actually from 0 to 5, it's just from 0 to 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to have maybe, you know, like another float array, float 32. And I'm going to add like a 0 0.5 component here and a 0 0.3 here, uh, 0.33. And maybe a 1 here and a 1 here. I'm just going to save that and I'm going to see what that sounds like. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. Surely, yes. So that's a completely new sound. Like, let's just remove this one here. Okay, so that doesn't do like a lot. But let's see this one. Okay, that sort of changed. Okay, nice, nice. So that's in between, like, I don't know, a square and a triangle wave or whatever. Um, and that's really good. That's really good because now we we have been able to um, alter like the the regular fundamental waves that they have. I don't even know what the wave that I created looks like. I would probably need some sort of a Fourier detransformation algorithm, which actually comes with the uh, library that I'm going to use here. I'm just let's just take a look at it again because. Um, it's really nice. It's a really nice, nice library there. Like something worth checking out. Uh, so it's here, and the library that I'm gonna use for the Fourier is this one, JSFFT for JavaScript for fast Fourier transform. And there's this really cool example here. This this thing here this. Well, I guess I can just run it from my side instead of JSFFT and the example. And I can just serve the page. There it is. So I guess, so this is what, what, what I'm talking about. This is the, the data, what it looks like. The sample is basically a square wave, if you look at it. Um, and this is the Fourier transform. So this is kind of what I have, the FFT. And this is like the inverse FFT, uh, like from the data that that I, that gets output here. Now, I don't know how this sort of like 
works data inverse FFT. Maybe uh, I, like because maybe what I want to do is sort of check. Yeah, I'm going to do that test. I'm going to try to take these numbers and I'm going to try to detransform them and see the waveform that we're hearing when I press the when I press the, the keys here. Like what does this waveform actually look like? Um, and I guess the answer is going to be, you know, some weird kind of uh, shape. And in order to see how that would work, it's a, it's a demo, but no, what I want to check out is the uh, example. This this guy here. So this thing here, now let's see data.inv FFT. Okay, so it's this inv FFT, but on the index index.js, somewhere in here I gotta find something that says inv. Okay, original filtered draw to canvas data.inv FFT. Okay, what's data though here? Data.fft. Uh, problem is what does this output like what is this um, data dot map okay real image if uh, okay dot map frequency i n if i is greater than n divided by five and mm, zero mm. Okay, so, so draw the canvas data dot. What is data? Okay, so map the map function sort of frequency i and n. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a bit of a difficult time understanding like what the complex array. Okay, complex array. Yeah, it's a complex array, I guess. The library here is complex array. Complex array. And for each iterator, map the mapper. Okay, mapper. Oh, there we go. So it's like a um, mapper function. Right, this real AI real so mm -hmm. conjugate for each iterator. Oh, real. Okay, so. But no, like I want to create uh, an array of this array type other dot real other dot image other this dot real. Mm -hmm. Okay, float 32 array constructor array type. Mm -hmm. It's a string components this for each value i components dot push. Okay, in place mapper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, this is for output, but what I really want to do is like construct. So it says you other others other instance of this dot real other this real dot length. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other is an instance of complex array. Then this array type this dot real is other dot real other dot imaginary. Okay. Components. So this converts them to string. This for each iterator. Components 
show you for this view this third view i imagine for GC information we use a single object in the iterator so what I really just want to do is uh, to like create my own uh, um, data here like draw to, draw to canvas draw to canvas okay so this is draw to canvas and uh, okay so I guess I guess the data uh, data data two uh, const data is equal to my value I am okay okay hundred and twenty eight map value I am I guess yeah I guess n is the one hundred and twenty two and I is the iterator value so set like the real values mm, okay okay so I guess uh, uh, data dot map yeah I guess these are the these are the ways in which you're the the like the thing here is sort of entering the values so I guess my guess is if I have just uh, the here in the demo no the tones no in the demo if I have these values here tones are uh, real imaginary and just gonna take this thing here and I'm gonna paste it I'm going to paste this right over here because I just want to create like a data set here these values and so instead of these draw the canvas this here because what I want to draw to the canvas is the inverted like this thing here mm -hmm. right okay it's so like this and instead of just doing this, it's going to be real i and imag i. Okay. And I just hope it doesn't break the like the thing there. So maybe this what this is going to do is it's going to show us my particular flavor of, uh, you know, like what I did here so let's see let's just see what that does to the uh, right here mm, is this yeah no 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 okay so, so this is kind of what I'm getting but it's not really what I sort of did here like Okay, so this is a simple low pass filter, trans transform back or all in one step. Okay, so this is all in one step, low pass filter, transform in place. Unless my, like, okay, uh, real imaginary. Oh, no, 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 of course, it has to be, yeah. It has to be just not without the if. Oh, but of course, because it, there's so many other samples. Uh, okay, so I guess I first I'd have to sort of erase everything. If I just erase everything from the Fourier transform, I should get flat. I should have gotten like a flat thing here because. Okay. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, something's not really FFT filtered. Like this, this here should show like you know nothing. But okay, let's try to 
instead of this just instead of this just okay just comment this out and I guess here I'm just gonna say if true oh man it's not responding to like index index.js index.js and I just want to check this example here where is it example.css bundle.j oh okay it's taking its source code from the bundle.js which is this thing here hmm. okay this is the code that I should have been editing okay all in one FFT filtered okay FFT filtered if I say true here it should just flatten the, the signal there true there you go it's flat okay flat 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 and now instead of this I'm gonna map the values that I had previously here on the uh, where was the this, this thing here these values here like I'm gonna do this mm -hmm. like this uh, like this, okay, so it's, this is redundant, and this is what I want to have there, and so, uh, so long as I remains within the range of uh, real dot length, I guess, it should, you know, add these components to the whole Fourier transform, and show us the shape that we're listening to when I press the keyboard, the the piano, um, the piano keys. There you go. So it's this sort of weird wave that we're getting out of. Oh wait. Uh, here. That's what that sounds like. This is the sound we're hearing. But maybe not because on the piano on the demo. Oh, yeah, I, I deleted these two. So let's add them here, these components, and let's listen to them. That sounds a little bit more like triangly, I don't know. And if we add them to the bundle.js, like here and here, we should look at, be looking at, oh, so it's a little bit more, you know, curvy in here, whatever. So, okay, okay, that's the idea. Now, the idea is that I'm okay it's 944 yeah it's kind of early um, the idea now is that I should be able to instead of you know altering the FFT directly like I'm doing here I'm gonna I'm gonna generate like this thing here and uh, so I'm gonna enter this into the FFT and that's gonna give me like this array and then I'm gonna like pass this array to this oscillator here which, which should be you know kind of easy now that I have all these components here so uh, for that uh, I'm I guess I'm gonna start by generating I, I could I could probably you know play around with this function here and uh, let's see I'm gonna I, I'm gonna try to create like a uh, instead of a square wave I want a triangular wave so I, I'm gonna like escalate this from here to the middle and then from here to zero and that should give me like a triangle triangular shape um, wave which should sound something like the triangular original triangular wave um, and so to do that, uh, I have to use, okay, so let me just sort of remove all the unnecessary things that I, that I did here. Just save this. Because I should have, you know, gotten rid of this. But I guess it didn't break the code, so that's fine. Okay. So now this is the original one, uh, but instead of true, instead of just true, like I did here, I should just replace this with the correct thing here. And, oh, so I broke it.
did I do? Oh, Teruwi. There you go. 5e. There you go. Okay, so that's the original. So now I'm going to change this thing to play around with the shapes here. And if I'm lucky, I should be able to maybe transfer this to the piano by outputting, you know, the text somewhere that has the value of, you know, just the variables in it. Just, just copy and paste them on the other source code. And after that, I'm going to find a way to mesh the two libraries together in a single file and do that along with my lines and squares algorithm. And then use, instead of, you know, typing in the function here, I'm going to try to generate it graphically so that, you know, people can change, you know, alter the shape and then play the piano with the, the tones that they generate here, the synthesis, sound synthesis from here. So I guess tonight I'm just going to do the, like, the part where I generate the variables here somewhere in text and then I'm copy them and paste them to the piano and then and then that's it. But I guess tomorrow I'm going to sort of automate that process and uh, just make it all nice and pretty to uh, so that people can generate their own waveforms. And the, the finished product, I guess, it's going to look like this. It's going to have the this little piano here. But on the top, on the top of it, it's gonna have my uh, my this thing here. Uh, the where is it? This thing here. So it's gonna be the piano below this, and this is people are gonna just like change the shape of the wave, and that's gonna get uh, you know played here. And I may add, you know, just for reference, some of these Fourier transform uh, plots or whatever. So that people can sort of look at what they're playing in their piano, as well. Um, but yeah, okay. So let's let's try to do that. Let's. I'm gonna try to create a triangular uh, triangular wave here. So the way to produce that is gonna be uh, pretty much just. Well, triangle sounds kind of boring, but yeah, what the hell? I'm gonna do that. So. From yeah, value dot real so uh huh. Mm -hmm. Value dot real equals uh, if it's between that range, it's one. Otherwise, it's zero. Right. So I'm just gonna write a loop here that uses these values to create sort of a triangular pattern. Yeah, maybe a little some crazier stuff later, uh, like maybe half triangular, half square, or something like that. Um, and so the way I could do that is by going here, and instead of having the uh, where is it? Where is it? Okay, so it's this thing here, and then uh, iterator mapper conjugate. Webpack in the FFT bundle.js uh, FFT no 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 gotta find the place where it has the I guess no not not that no, not that one it's where is it ah uh, this is it here it is yes this is the one. So instead of this, hmm, if i is less than n divided by 2, so it's if it's before the half, then value.real is going to be equal to, uh, so 100% of the, uh, what's it to be, equals i divided by uh, like the total which is uh, 128 times n uh, no it's real it's this one fraction of the total times i I guess else 
this is false. And maybe just this to see what it does there, if it's like a crazy sort of waveform. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, so yeah, it's a sort of ugly wave there that no, no, it's, it's too much times i, i times n, i divided by n divided by 2 probably. Uh, it's also too much. No, that's not what it's supposed to look like at all. Growing too fast. Yeah, no, that's not that's not the idea. It's uh, equals i, just i. Okay, no, not i. I value dot real equals. So if I want it to be one, and, okay. Well. Okay, so it's going to be 64 uh, steps and 1 64th of, okay, 1 divided by n, of course, divided by n divided by 2 times i, which is i, i divided by, okay, so it's, yeah, there you go. So it's half, half square, half. Uh, you know, this sort of looks like a sawtooth shape, kind of, wave. Yeah, like a sawtooth kind of wave. So this should sound, yeah, like sawtooth if I enter it on the other, on the other, uh, the piano. And so in order to enter it to the other one, I guess I need like an, an array of this shape. And, hmm. So, I want to print all the data somewhere, uh, and this bundle.js, uh, let me see, index, I guess here in the index, I could probably add something like, okay, so this is pre, pre, and here in the body, I could add another pre, uh, what was the, uh, there was, I used, I guess, pre id equals, uh, Array, imagaray, pre up. Oh, there we go. Autocomplete. So array. So this is somewhere in here. I don't see it though. Oh, there it is. Array. Okay. So over here, I'm gonna output like the this array here. Um. But the problem is going to be like, how am I going to do that? Because the bundle, uh, let me just see if I can sort of uh, reference it from here. Um, okay, so I'm going to look at some uh, hackathon project that I did where I, I can't quite remember the get element context by like this one here. Okay, so this one, what I did here was that Okay, I referred to the index.js, sorry, main.js. I referred to the, there it is, get element by ID. So it's something like this. And this should just display some text there. But it's not Conway, rather it's in Imag array, which is, is here. There it is. Text. Okay, so now instead of just text, I'm gonna try to uh, output the uh, where is it? The index.js. No, uh, the complex array.js. Conjugate. It's conjugate, but no, 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 not conjugate anything. I want to just output it. Which is, I think, uh, for each iterator, no, uh, to string. Okay, so this is gonna convert it to a string, but that's not really what I want. I want maybe one for each. So it's probably going to be something along the lines of for each in uh, wherever it is that I. Okay, so I'm just gonna close this because this is the one that has all the code that I've been defiling this with, oh no, it's not this one, it's this one, this is the defiled code. Okay, so, for each, so, in, so data dot, 
for each and for each for each one and I think the syntax is something like oh where is it for each for each iterator for each and iterator okay I wonder if there's somewhere in here where they have an example of for each this dot for each for each iterator hmm no it's just for let i equals one i less than no mapper this for each magnitude mm. value dot real value dot image map value i okay so i guess it's something like this value and then i where the value yeah value is the value and i is just the iterator value and i okay value and i okay so for each oh, what was it for each right for each value comma i then ro function and then just this and uh what was the syntax yeah like that and so for each of them for each of the values i just want to add to accumulate that into a uh, var output string and inside that string i'm just going to write the syntax of the like the javascript that i want to write so it's going to be something along the lines of this Imag. okay so it's going to be output string is going to be equal to it's going to be equal to itself plus and then something like real and then the i equals the value dot real i guess uh, then uh, plus a new line and imag and the value of i as well equals value dot imag oh, is it though is it imag yeah i guess value dot imag value dot will value dot imag okay but without yeah just like that and maybe with a semicolon and uh, just a semicolon here I like that and now instead of this instead of this the output string oops string like that ah oh, nice very nice yes yes but of course it's, it does need a new line here as well okay oh wow nice okay so in order to listen to this in my little piano i'm gonna have to take this copy it and paste it in the tones where it's uh, here mm, the demo here and paste it and have a 127 127 element long 127 and 127 save this and just cross your fingers that this doesn't break anything and it actually sounds like a sawtooth wave there we go Okay, so that's like my mixed waveform between a sawtooth and a square. Nice. Um, okay, sure. So, <laughs> so let's just change this so that, okay, this is the piano, so that, of this so I don't really want 
I don't really want the wave anymore. I just want to compare that sound to the actual saw saw tooth square. Okay, so this is square saw tooth. Yeah, that's the original sawtooth, like the clean sawtooth. And this, this right here. is my sawtooth, like the square sawtooth that I, I created. Okay, so that's that's a successful experiment. Mm -hmm. So I guess the fact that they sound similar shows that the, so the experiment worked. Um, all the zeros that you see here are because I'm applying a uh, filter for the Fourier transform, which is something that, you know, it has to do with signal processing and all that stuff, but um, I guess you can find out what that means uh, on the on the video that I shared on Twitter. It's from number file. If you just type in on uh, Google number file Fourier transform, it's F O U R I E R Fourier. You can find out more about what's going on here. Uh, but anyway, I'm I'm pretty satisfied with with what I've done tonight. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to start working with the lines and squares uh, library I wrote in order to, so instead of like doing all this long process, I, I just wanted to prove that I was able to, you know, transform a, a waveform that I created with the, the loop here into a Fourier transform and just fit it into the piano. Like, you know, this, this wave that I created. Now, instead of creating it, you know, with numbers in a loop and everything, I'm going to create the, these shapes uh, using my, you know, my line, uh, lines and squares uh, plot algorithm. Um, and, well, I, I guess I'll see you tomorrow night and have a lovely night. Bye-bye.